This is Algebra 2 with Trig 9.3. We're going to talk about probability. When you roll a six-sided die, the possible outcomes or the possible results are called outcomes. When outcomes of rolling a die, the outcomes would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Those are considered your outcomes. We're working on some vocab words. An event. When we talk about an event, it is an outcome or a collection of outcomes. For example, the event of rolling an odd number is going to be when you roll a 1, a 3, or a 5. Those are the numbers of rolling this dice that has six possibilities. The odd ones are the numbers 1, 3, and 5. When we talk about probability, It's the measurement of the likelihood or chance that an event will occur. Probability is always a number between 0 and 1. So you don't want to give an answer that's 50, or definitely 50%. That is not an answer. Your numbers have to be between 0 and 1. The probability can be written as a decimal between 0 or 1. You can write a fraction. The numerator is going to be smaller than the denominator. So it's between 0 and 1. Or you can do a ratio. These ratios, besides a fraction, that's often considered a ratio, We would write them as a colon, 2 to 7. That would be a ratio. So our answers are going to be between 0 and 1. If you get small decimals, you're not as likely to occur. If you get larger decimals, up to 1, you're more likely to occur. So the closer you get to 1, the more likely that that happens. Theoretical probability. This is the mathematical calculation of an event. So if you think about flipping a coin, theoretical probability is one out of two. There's one side that's ahead, and there's two possible sides. So the probability of rolling or flipping a coin onto the heads is one out of two. But we all might experience that if you actually flip there and flipped your coin, you might get heads three times. But Mr. Weber, I thought the probability was one out of two. That's called experimental probability. We'll discuss that shortly. This is theoretical probability, and we are calculating the mathematical sides of things. So when all outcomes are equally likely, the theoretical probability is the number of outcomes in event A over the total number of outcomes. Now sometimes that wording can be a little confusing. I often think about probability as favorable over possible. Favorable, those are the number of outcomes in a certain event. Total number of outcomes are the possible ways things can happen. Favorable over possible, that's probability. So if you read a story problem and it says probability, this is what you need to think about. Favorable over possible. You're looking for two numbers, one to go on top, one to go on bottom. You pick a card from a standard deck of 52. Find the probability 
of picking an eight. So what's the probability to choose an eight? You look at your deck of cards and you notice that there are four eights in a deck of cards. There's four of every type of card. Four kings, four eights, four threes. But we're looking for probability of eight. So we want favorable over possible. So there are four cards that are eights, and there's 52 cards that you're working with, and that can be reduced. Two goes into that two times, two goes into that 26, and then that's one out of 13. So, what's the probability of a red king? Well, this is probability, so I'm thinking about favorable over possible. So, that reminds me, this is going to be a fraction type answer. How many are actually red kings? The diamonds are red, the hearts are red. So there's two kings total out of 52 cards possible. This is the one we're dividing by two, and we get one out of 26. So you, you have your probability as a value less than one. This type might be a little a bit more challenging. A talent agency conducts a talent show for local musicians. On a given evening, seven musicians are scheduled to perform. Seven bands are going to play. The order in which the musicians perform is randomly selected. So we don't know what order they're going to play in. What is the probability that the musicians perform in alphabetical order? So it's easy to say, I don't know. But you got to concentrate that probability means favorable over possible. Favorable means what are the number of ways musicians can be in alphabetical order? How many ways is that possible? There is only one way for the bands to line up in alphabetical order. Whoever has the name closest to A is first, and whoever has the last name closest to Z goes last. Alphabetical order. Now, what is the number of ways that the bands could perform? What are the possible ways that they could perform? Now, this you, you got to concentrate on determining. Does this sound like a combination question? where order doesn't matter, or is this a permutation question where order matters? Clearly, we're asking for the order of the band, so it's clearly a permutation. So you could call this 7P7. You have seven bands, and you're picking seven bands. But that would be the same thing as 7 factorial, and more people understand that one better. That you have seven choices, then you have six choices, then you have five, four, three, two, one choices. So this is one out of 5,040. 
0.0019. That is a value less, less than one, but greater than zero. It's pretty close to zero chance. Here you have four friends that are the musicians. What's the probability that the first two performers are your friends? So there's seven bands, four bands you know pretty well, so you call them your friends. You have to go to honors night, so you can't stay for all seven. You only get to listen to two bands. What's the probability that you're gonna listen to your two friends? So again, it's favorable over possible. What are the number of ways two performers are going to be your friends? Does it matter how your friends play? Does it matter the order your friends play in? You just want them to play, right? So this is a combination. So this is 4C2. You have four friends and you want to choose two of them. What's the bottom going to be? A lot of people say that it's seven factorial. But that's the number of ways seven bands can play. We're not getting to play seven bands. We're only getting to play two bands. And we don't care about the order in which they play. We just want them to play. So that's why it's a combination again. It's seven because it's the possible, but you're only choosing two because we're talking about the first two before you leave. So that is six over 21. And that can be reduced to two over seven, which is 2.85. So much more likely that you're going to listen to two of your friends first compared to them lining up in alphabetical order. Odds. Now odds are not probability. Probability is favorable over possible. This is not favorable over possible. You can use odds to measure the likelihood of an event. Odd measures the chances in favor of an event occurring or the chances against an event occurring. So we have two formulas. Take a look at these two formulas. How are they different than probability? You got to look at the words. Number of possible outcomes in A. Well, that sounds like our favorable. But what's the denominator? Not possible or not favorable, right? Number of outcomes not in A would be the number that are not favorable. It's all the rest of the options. And odds against is just the reciprocal. So not favorable over favorable. And this is where it's more common to write it as with a colon or as a fraction than it is to write it with a decimal. Definitely not a percent. So if we have a marble, a group of marbles actually, we have six red ones, 12 yellow ones, nine black marbles. How many total are there? There are 27 total marbles. So what are the odds in favor of drawing a red marble?
Well, you know that this is supposed to be favorable over not favorable. So how many are red? How many are not red? 21. And we can reduce those. So that's 2 out of 7, or that's 2 to 7. Odds against. Well, using our formula from above, we know odds against are not favorable over favorable. So the odds against a black marble being drawn. How many are not black ones? 18 are not black ones. Not, uh, nine of them are black ones. You have 27 total. So you take away the nine from here that takes you to 18. That means 18 are the other two type. And favorable means the ones that are black. We can, of course, reduce that to 2 to 1, or we can write that 2 to 1. So we have favorable. Now we flip over to our last page. This is our experimental probability. We implied before that we had theoretical. Those are the mathematical ones that we talk about favorable over possible that happen mathematically. Now, experimental has to have an event that we are doing an experiment with. So we have experimental probability by performing an experiment, you can conduct a survey, or you can look at a history of events. So this is the number of trials, the number of times that it occurred. Again, it's favorable over possible. It's probability, so it still is favorable over possible. But it's favorable in the ways that it has occurred. Okay, so flipping a coin. You could sit there and flip a coin 20 times and see how many are heads and how many are tails. And you could do your calculation and compare that to what theoretical probability should be. Here is a set of data. So the exam grades in a history class are shown. The probability that a randomly chosen student in the history class received a C or better. And that's what we're trying to figure out. So the total number of students who took the test, that would be our possible. So we're doing that one apparently first. But that's going to be three. One got a D. Eight got C's. Twelve got B's. Seven got A's. That's 31 total. Of those that were surveyed, how many received at least a C? Well, eight received C's. Twelve were B's. Seven were A's. That's 27 that fell into our favorable topic. So the probability of at least a C is favorable over possible, which comes out to be 0.871. Next we have geometric probability. Some probabilities are found by calculation a ratio of two lengths, areas, or volumes. So we're going to find the probability that a dart thrown at a rectangle board 
it's one of the triangles. Now you need to understand that geometric probability is all random. So you're not allowed to aim. And if a dart does not land inside of the box, it's not calculated. We don't consider those. We only consider those that are inside the box. So remember the probability is favorable over possible. So we need the favorable space compared to the possible space. So we're going to look at the area of the shaded regions, which are triangles in this case. So we're going to do the sum of the area of the triangles over the area of the rectangle. So the area of the triangles. We know the area of a triangle is half the perpendicular sides. So 3 times 4. We also have half of that side is 5 times 8. We have another triangle, which is half of 3 times 4. The area of the rectangle is the 40 times the 20. So we would add this all together. This is 12, take half of it, which is 6. 40, take half of it, which is 20. 12, take half of it, which is 6. So the probability that our dart is going to hit one of the triangles is going to be 32. Six plus 20 plus 6. The area of the rectangle, remember, was 40 by 20. That went in the total or the possible. So that's 400. So that gives us a probability of 0.8. The shaded regions added together divided by the possible regions.